Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel, Zachary here. Um, I wanted to make this video trying to see, um, well, it's basically an introduction video and explaining how how everything started. Um, like I said before, my last video was kind of, it was kind of rough. I did not record a lot because I basically was like on and off from the chemo. My medication is like super strong so the first week, the first days i was like okay you know i'm feeling it i'm doing pretty good but after the second day um i was really loopy really like not under the let's say under the weather um so i was like on and off i didn't know what they were doing to me a lot of the times because i was asleep my mom and wife were there my wife was like and i was really just not there so thankfully thankfully my wife was helping me out a lot um, I really appreciate her uh, shout out to her uh, shout out to my mom as well because she also helped us out um, whenever we needed anything food um, pretty much stuff like that um, well I started cancer well I first got diagnosed with cancer when I was in sophomore year so I was 16 going to 17 years old around roughly around that time um, let's just put in where it was uh, something new to me uh, I did not expect something like this to ever happen in my family um, everybody in my family is cancer free nobody's ever been diagnosed with cancer um, so it was fairly new to my whole family uh, nobody ever expected something like this um, but I mean stuff happens for a reason anybody can happen to this um, but I mean I'm blessed to be where I am today I'm blessed to be able to have treatment done and to better myself um, how did I get diagnosed so I was a fairly fairly healthy guy I played sports throughout my whole life Played basketball, track, football, soccer. Um, so I did pretty much anything. I played sports, did anything anybody can do. Uh, I remember playing basketball, which is my, my main sport that I just truly love. Um, playing basketball, you know, just regular friends. And I ended up falling a ball, ended up um, creating in my knee, which was like, like for me, it was just like, okay, it's just a bruise, you know, like, it's just typical, any bruise anybody can think of. I didn't really think much of it, just maybe just, I sit, and that's it, just continue on. Um, did that for however how long I can remember, but um, just, just overall, after the time, it just started to get worse, where I noticed the ball just got bigger and bigger and bigger, and I didn't understand why. They thought of it as a bruise again, didn't think nothing of it just kept continuing playing on with it and just continue doing the same thing just continue playing and not worry about it um it got to a point where it was just where there was a time where the ball and the pain of it was so rough on me that that it would limit me to a point where i had to sit down so it's like i couldn't really like walk so i was like okay you know this is not something normal now you know it's like why would i be feeling that much pain when it should just be a bruise so i was like no uh told my parents about it uh, my mom was like well let's do a, an appointment with your real doctor to see what happens and see what it is uh went in for a checkup they checked my knee they were like let's do x-rays let's you know see what it is um it was like wrong i said three or three or four when I went to go get that done, came back home, normal thing. Um, again, went outside to play basketball, outside my basketball court, regular, typical, My that's my routine. So coming out of it, um, I'd say roughly a good, say two hours, I think. Uh, the hospital called my mom. Um, and I, I didn't know none of this, this is just something that my mom hid for me to protect me and not scare me. 
um, now that I know the story. But so she, they got contact her. They told her that she should, they should probably take her to the hospital to get it better checked out. Um, and I was like, oh, okay, I guess you know, like. Uh, but around that time, I hated hospitals. I do not, I did not like hospitals whatsoever. So I never went to a hospital ever. So for me, it was like, um, it was already like, uh, okay, I guess. Went to the hospital, went to the emergency room, which was fairly awkward for me. I was like, why an emergency room? But again, I continued on, listened to my mom. I was like, okay, you know, we're gonna be here. All of a sudden they came in, did a lot of tests, did a lot of blood work, um, more x-rays, MRIs. Uh, for me, it was like, all of this is new to me. I didn't understand why. Um, so let it happen. I ended up staying overnight there, which was fairly, fairly awkward to me. I had never stayed overnight at a hospital ever. So this was my first time ever. Um, I was like, I, I didn't understand why. Um, they ended up doing more and more tests again, continued doing more tests. Um, they ended up doing what they call a biopsy on the site of my knee, and which was very, very painful. I, I, that was the first time ever getting something done like that. So very painful. Um, happened about 24 hours, I say later. Um, I remember sitting, staying, I was in, just in the hospital bed. And then all of a sudden, a lot of doctors came in. I'd say a good roughly, I think there was about 15 people inside the room where I was staying at when everything happened. At that moment, my mom and dad both were there. Um, 15 people came in. For me, it was like, why is there so many people here? Um, doctors came in um, and then started talking to my parents. I was just laying in bed, calmed down. I was like, just looking around. I was just, for me, it was, I was just so focused examining every single person that was there. Cause for me it was like, why are you, like, why are you here? You know? Started, the doctor started talk, talking to my mom and they ended up breaking the news and saying, um, based off of the tests that we have done, x-rays and everything, um, the ball that your son has in your knee is abnormal. After all the tests we've done and everything, um, they confirmed that your son has cancer. Now, I see my mom and dad start just completely breaking down. For me, was just the fact that just hearing that was like, uh, okay, like, what, like what's going on? Like, what do you mean? You know, because I, like, none of this cancer stuff, none of this, you may have cancer, something abnormal, like, none of this was told to me at all. So I was like in shock with everything. I didn't know anything about it. So I heard the word cancer, and I have cancer. And for me, it was just the fact that I just stayed in bed and just like analyzed and just sort of took everything in at the same moment, you know. Me, personally, I am a very, very strong-minded person. So for me to cry or show any type of emotion is very, very rare because, again, I'm a very strong-minded person and don't think of stuff in the very low. So I just see my parents cry and then all these psychologists started talking to me and like, oh, hey, hey, do you need to cry? Do you need to cry? And I was just like, no, like I'm perfectly fine. Like I got it on my own, you know? Like I got stuff on my own, like I could do it on my own. So all of this happened, diagnosed with the osteosarcoma, just my diagnosis. Found in the bones in young adults. After that, I was like, okay, what's next? You know, like I got cancer, like what's next? Like, I wanna know what's gonna happen. Like, what's, what do we do? Um, 
So doctor started explaining to me they have to do chemotherapy. They have to put an IV port in, which uh, I'm pretty sure y'all saw in my last video. It's just the port that I have right here in my chest where they basically do everything. They do my treatments, do any blood transfusions, any, um, any hydration that I need. Pretty much anything that I need to do, it just gets to, to the port, which is fairly common in um, when it's due to chemotherapy or any type of cancer. Like everybody, a lot of the times, has a port. Um, first diagnosis was chemotherapy. Okay. Um, I try to post some pictures on the side too, you know, showing some of the treatments that I got done or pictures when I was getting in treatment you know just so y'all can see how far it's been you know um yeah they did one time diagnosis was pretty rough the first time um like i said i got diagnosed again this is my third time going through chemotherapy i've relapsed three times sadly but i don't think of it as a sad thing I think of it more as a positive like i said been diagnosed three times and I've been fairly blessed to be here you know so first diagnosis I can say that that was the roughest one I've been through I lost so much weight um, throwing up everywhere I got super slim lost a lot of my hair um, went through it for about I think six months. I think that was the, the, the around how long I did chemo for. Um, around that time, I also got um, my amputation. I do have a left leg amputation. Sorry, so late, but I have a left leg amputation, which was where my location of my ball ball was on my knee. Um, fun fact just so that everybody can know. Um, the amputation was very hard on a lot of people. They did not expect me to do something like this because I had three options. Option number one, amputation. Option number two, it's called a rotation testy, where they rotate um, that part of your ankle and convert it into your knee. Um, fairly common in women. That's why um, I didn't go that route. The third option was putting uh, metal inside my knee. Reason I did not do no, option number three, and this was my personal preference. No, Nobody else chose for me. I did all of this on my own, my own decision. I did not choose that one because of the research that I had done. On the research that I had done was Yes, I was still gonna have my full functioning leg with metal, but I had to get surgeries three to five years every time for, to replace the metal. Three to five years for every metal that I need to change is not so not so appealing to me, you know? Having to do surgeries and surgeries was like, and then therapy was like, uh, I don't know if I want to go that route. I really did not want to go that route. So, was like, nah, I, I can't, I can't do that route. Not only that, the chances of my cancer coming back to the same place and spreading upper were pretty high, in my opinion. They didn't confirm this on me, but in my opinion, it was pretty high. So, I was like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to make myself suffer more and get my cancer spread more into worse places just so I could have a leg was like no I, that's not for me and I chose to amputate my leg at a young age it sounds crazy but yeah it happened I chose to amputate my own leg um, my parents did not decide none of this a lot of my family was like, why, you know, why did you decide to do that? Uh, again, I explained to them the same the same thing. I'd rather have amputated my leg and gotten a prosthetic 
than having my full functioning leg, knowing I'm gonna have to have surgeries three to five years every time. Let alone that, knowing the fact that there's a chance where my cancer could spread to my ankle or even spread upwards just because of having metal in my leg. Did I decide that? No, I did not want that. I had to like make it clear to a lot of people that that's not what, what I wanted, you know? It's like, yeah, it's a leg, but at the same time, there's more to life than just a leg, in my opinion. So decided not to keep my leg. I decided to amputate my leg. Um, ended up getting a prosthetic, which I'm more than happy to have one because I'm pretty much walking same way maybe not the, exactly the full 100% way but hey I'm walking you know it's like I'm still walking I'm still moving around just like a regular person I still I work right right now not working but I used to work so it's like I'm doing what everybody else was doing so it's having not not have a leg was just perfectly fine with myself continuing on with my diagnosis yeah so first one was rough I, I could honestly say that was the roughest one I had been through as, as far as right now. The first one was very, very rough. Um, that was the roughest one. I had to get my leg amputation with it. Um, let alone that, I had four lung surgeries on each side with it as well. So, yeah, like, that first one was was really rough on me. I, I could personally say I was really rough. Um, I, I, I I don't know how I did it. Um, stayed strong, stayed positive, you know, say, hey, I'm gonna get through this, I'm gonna do this, like, you know, my family supporting me so much, um, my friends supporting me so much, and it, it was just, I got through it, you know, regular thing, got through it. Um, ended up being fine, started recovering, um, started doing three month scans, which is typical after you get done with chemo and you're done, after everything comes out good. Um, lasted about for about a good six, nine months, I think, when we had to do scans again. Boom, again. I got re-diagnosed with cancer again. Had to switch up my whole chemo treatment once more. And it was like, why again, you know? It's just, it's just a question everybody asks, why again? Same thing, I asked myself why. Think of it, I was like, oh, well, got it again. Okay, let's not cry about it, let's not worry about it, let's, you know? Let's just stick to it and just continue on and get better from it. I was like, okay, I have to get treatment again. Okay, that's, for me, I was just, okay, that's fine. Let's do it. I have no problem doing more chemo. You know, I'll get through it. That's just my mindset. I'll get through it. Did chemo again. The outcome on this one was way, way different. I ended up gaining so much weight. I'll show a picture. I was so big. I think this was the biggest I had ever been in my life and it was just crazy. I, I never expected to be this big in a good way, you know? So my second treatment went, was, um, it was, I can say it was just so much different. It was just amazing how much my, I saw my own body change just from chemo. I was so amazed by it. I gained so much weight. Um, it was just, totally different from the first one it was just like wow like the first one was so rough on me i was having to be sick so much and then having to do this the other one where it's like i'm not even getting sick like i'm just gaining weight eating so much food that i just enjoyed where the first one i couldn't even eat food that i enjoyed i couldn't tolerate pretty much anything like i couldn't tolerate the smell of grease or like I couldn't even eat a burger. Like, it was just so, so different for me. Where I was just like, wow, like the second treatment was so amazing, you know? That I was truly like, well, this was way better than the first one. Did it, finished six months again. 
and after that I was cancer free for three years yeah yeah two, two three years three years I think that's what it was and I had a blast you know life was good I was traveling with my family there's so much stuff um, it was just it was just amazing you know um, that was my second one this is my third one and again I had my first chemo and it went good in my opinion it's, I felt the same way as the second one eating whatever I want not having to worry about throwing up anything um, so for me having to be in my third session of chemo me well my third re relapse and for my first chemo to be done um, I feel pretty good you know I feel pretty good very positive for me is if you're not positive no chemo no treatment no whatever it is none of it's gonna work unless you have a very positive mind and that's just something I go based off of so for me is that if I'm not positive I'm not taking no gratitude in what the doctors are doing if you're not listening to what they're saying the diagnosis whatever you need to do like if you just don't have a positive mindset every time you go into chemo I personally feel that it won't work and every time that I've gone to chemo I've always been in a positive mindset always been very happy always been very uplifted to do anything during the chemo so for me is that if I do that my chemo's come out good and that's what I've been doing ever since I started and I will continue to do it because I feel like that's just what makes me happy that's what makes me happy that's what makes me feel better after every chemo and I feel that every time I do that I everything comes out good so that's what I basically keep doing every single time so hopefully I have to do more chemo but like I said very positive about it very grateful for everybody that you know has um has come to my life has messaged me friends family that support me um I really really appreciate everybody that is supporting me in my YouTube channel as well you know this is new to me I know it's, it's, will come different very I'll try to like do different stuff like I'll do more vlogs with my family you know just trying to get the hang of it because it's obviously it's fairly new um I posted about some questions um to see like maybe something y'all might want to know about me um uh, my friends are are really goofballs but I know one question that I got was um how do I stay positive how do I stay positive is um, I think of my family uh, and my wife uh, obviously I'm married you're here young age but you know I'm married and I'm truly happy with how my marriage is going right now with my wife and we're about to be one year uh, in like two weeks so I'm very happy I'm very happy um, but you know for me it's family what keeps me positive uh, my family is my main priority to me uh, I'm a family first guy so to me is like if I'm not positive and if I'm not um, in a good mindset like I feel like my family won't be in the same place as me so for me it's very important for me to keep myself positive keep myself very uplifted um, for the sake of my family and for the sake of like having to for them to see that if I'm doing good then they're gonna do good for me is that's one thing that how I stay positive is that you know like knowing that I'm happy and I'm very positive about how my chemo are going is the fact that I know my family is gonna be in the same place as I am so for me that's that's how I stay positive is just thinking of my my family um, well, I mean, I hope this video kind of educated, not educated, but kind of showed how um, how it's been for me. I kind of explained a little bit. It's not, I know some, I'm very new to this, so I kind of didn't explain very, very well, but 
um, like I said, I'll post pictures so that y'all can see um, how it's been through, you know, like from when I, pictures from when I first started, um, pictures where I have um, done my surgeries, um, after surgeries, um, just stuff like that so y'all could see um, where, I, how, like how it's been, you know, kind of a better message than just me talking so that y'all could see um, where it's been through, you know, like it's just so much that cancer patient goes through that you know it's like if you're not there and you're not seeing it for your own self it's very very hard to compare to other people and it's very hard to understand so i like doing this because it shows the world how it how it really is for people you know um knowing that i have a lot of people that follow me on social media not a lot but i mean having them see how stuff is is like very amazing to them you know so i hope y'all enjoyed my video i hope y'all see um how it is for me or how it's been um i hope y'all continue to support i really appreciate um y'all taking the time to watch my video um thank you and have a nice day